What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode. Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com and I'm really excited to dive into today's topic because we're going to be talking all about your comfort zone. And this is something very, very serious that I wish a lot of people will just have a greater understanding, a different perspective shift if you want to call it that because when they can really find out what that means, their own comfort zone and what's on the outside of it, oh, I'm telling you, there is a world of just greatness. Everything that you want is right on the other side of your comfort zone, but it's really hard to take that first step. Now, hopefully, after diving into today's presentation, you're gonna learn, especially with some of these exercises, how to officially step outside your comfort zone. One thing before we continue on today's presentation, keep this in mind. Your favorite role models, your favorite heroes, your favorite you know athletes, anybody that you look up to, they all have a comfort zone. You are no different from them. Everybody struggles with this. Everybody, okay? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, Joe, that doesn't make any sense at all. You know, they're so confident and courageous and uh, it's just different. No, it's not. Trust me, because I bet you anything that whoever your favorite, you know, athlete or actor is, whatever, you know, at one point in their life, they had to embrace right their comfort zone. They had to take that leap of faith. They had to take that step in the right direction of where they're trying to get to. And it was probably very difficult for them. In fact, uh, for most actors, you know, uh, athletes, anybody out there that has this grand story, you know, that some people that made it to the top, uh, you can look in terms of like, let's say mixed martial arts with Conor McGregor, for example, back in the day, I mean, the dude was dirt poor. I mean, he was sleeping like literally, I think in his car at several times, uh, and just trying to make it, you know, and it was a struggle for him. And it was, it was this comfort zone that he was in of embracing it saying, okay, Hey, I could decide to, you know, work this trait. I think at that time he was a plumber. Um, he worked this trait and take this route and live a, you know, regular life, or I can embrace my comfort zone, make my life really uncomfortable for, Hey, who knows when, but I know for a fact, if I don't give up, I will eventually reach my goals. And that's what he did. He has a documentary on Netflix and it's really inspiring. Just seeing everything that he had to go through as a young kid and, and growing up and, and seeing the decision that he made. So you can see that the greats, right? The ones that make it to the very top, the ones that we look up to and, you know, there are role models. Guess what? At a certain point in their life, they were struggling with their comfort zone. So keep that in mind that this presentation is going to help you with just a different mindset, right? A different perspective shift on things to hopefully get you in the right direction of embracing your goals and going after your dreams. For today's topic overview, we're first and foremost going to dive into what exactly is the comfort zone? You know, what does that actually mean? And then we're going to go into by far one of the greatest stories ever. I've been uh, telling this story at Heartletics for the longest, I probably made several, several, several videos going over the topic, and it is one that just hits home, and hopefully, it gives you a sense of a reminder, you know, who are you going to feed, the good wolf or the bad wolf, and then lastly, some exercises to really help you with, once again, embracing your comfort zone, and, and hitting that first, you know, that leap of faith, that first step right outside. And I, I tell you anything, if you follow through some of these exercises, you will embrace and enhance your comfort zone and it's gonna help you out tenfold. And before we dive into some of the specifics about your comfort zone, keep this image in mind. It may seem very simple, right? You have a small circle and then right next to it, you have this big circle. But you can see that the small circle, why is it so small? Well, it's your comfort zone, you know? And it's like where the magic happens that's the big circle. That's your dreams. That's your health and fitness goals. That's your career status. That's your income status. That's your relationships. That's honestly whatever it is that you want, right? Honestly, uh, something that you don't have right now and you're trying to acquire, whether it's, you know, once again, uh, better health or uh, anything like that, your dreams, magic, anything, right? Just have fun with it, okay? The reason why you're not there is because there's typically a line that's stopping you and it's your comfort zone. Meaning that when push comes to shove, hey, uh, something, typically it's the bad wolf, the ego, I like to say, is, is holding us back from getting to that side, you know? 
It's the one that's feeding us the lies, the doubts. It's the one that when you're scared, you're timid, you're like, uh, you're questioning, oh, should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I say this? Should I not say this, right? It's this internal chit chat with yourself and this internal battle, right? Remember the good wolf versus the bad wolf. It's a real thing here, guys. And when you get to that line where you start having those internal conversations with yourself, and this is why at Heartletics, I love talking about the mindset because you can really learn how to enhance and empower your own mindset to win those internal conversations. That way you're not feeding into the bad wolf. The one that's going to feed you the lies, the one that's going to tell you you're not good enough, the one that's going to say, hey, you're never going to make it because odds are, right? If you're stuck right now in your life and you're like, man, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to do. I, I, I want to achieve this, but every time I try, I just fail. And I want to get to here in my life and I want to do all these crazy things. But every time I, once again, try to pursue that, something happens and I just feel, you know, defeated and discouraged. And I end up, you know, falling off the wagon, going back to my old ways. I bet you anything. It's because of your comfort zone. And if you just start really uh, embracing some of the different things that we talk about at Heartletics, you know, whether it's the physical habits, whether it's the mindset habits, all, any of this, right? It all applies to the same. Giving you power, giving you permission to start embracing you becoming the best version of yourself, physically and mentally. Your comfort zone is a real thing. Keep that in mind. Uh, your comfort zone, that's what makes you feel safe. That's what makes you feel in control. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that if you just like living a you know lifestyle or just general life where you're not trying to embrace your goals, you're not trying to achieve you know these certain milestones, and that's okay, right? Let me let me say that from the start right here before we progress on this presentation. That's okay. I'm somebody that wants to just try my best at everything that I do and go after every single goal humanly possible. Uh, one of my greatest things that I always say about, and I mentioned it several times in my videos, is the last thing I want in life is to live a mediocre life, regular average Joe Schmo, and let's just say, hey, I end up making it to heaven one day, and God's like, oh, how was it, Joe? And I was like, oh, man, it was great. You know, I, I ran this business called Heartletics. You know, I was able to help all these people reach their health and fitness goals, you know, had an amazing family, had amazing, you know, friends. I had a blast. And he's like, oh man, that's sweet. And then God pulls me over to, let's say this, you know, movie theater. And there's this big screen. And he's like, hey man, take a seat. All right, gives me some popcorn, maybe a protein shake. And, and there we are, right? We're watching this movie. And on the title, it says, you know, Joe Kalari. And it was this life that was so much better than the life that I had lived. It was just grand. It was amazing. Like, I got to do all these things. I got to help out even more people. I got to influence and inspire millions of people. And it was just this amazing life. But I didn't get to experience any of that because I never stepped out my comfort zone. I got too familiar, right? I got too comfortable uh, living within my own means saying like, okay, well, hey, everything's good right now. Like, I don't need to do anything more. I don't need to hit that next milestone. I don't need to hit that next achievement. No, listen. Especially as men, like we need to constantly go after our goals and accomplish them and then make new goals and then accomplish them and then make new goals and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You and myself have one life to live. Our job is to leave a legacy. Honestly, like I want you to think about this for yourself. Um, one of my favorite movies is, is Rocky right? You know, Rocky Balboa. It's just like, you see everything that he goes through. And even though he's a fictional character, they still have a statue, right? A real statue of Rocky. Why? Because it's that sense of inspiration. It's that sense of, man, you know, this boxer, right? Rocky Balboa, everything that he had to go through and that, you know, influence and, you know, uh, positive effect that he had on others, they were able to make a statue out of him. And I think that's awesome. Now, I'm not saying like, I don't want them to, you know, I'm not saying oh, somebody should make a statue out of me. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is he had such an effect, right? A movie had such an effect on somebody's people's lives where he was a, he, he was, he was a legend. He left a legacy. I mean, think about it. Uh, in the next 50, several years, right? To come, they're probably still going to be talking about Rocky. It's one of these things where at least for myself personally, 
I'm like, they're no different than me. We, we all bleed the same color blood, right? We all breathe in oxygen. We all should be hitting our protein goals, right? And it's like, if they're no different than me, why am I letting my mindset stop me from embracing that? Why am I letting me get in the way of leaving a legacy? My, once again, my biggest regret is God telling me like, dude, I had this amazing life planned out for you, but instead you got too comfortable. So keep that in mind as we progress. Um, I want nothing but the best for you. I want nothing but the best for anybody, right? Honestly, uh, in my opinion, I feel like, hey, everybody has their own talents. Everybody has their own self-worth. And I want you to embrace that and understand that you have something about that you that is so special, so rare. Nobody else has that. Nobody. I want you to dig deep. I want you to find that. And I want you to start literally living your life in permission to going after your goals and embracing that because you could help out others. You could leave a legacy, but you can't do it if you're stuck inside your comfort zone. You can't. We need to get to the growth zone. So we need to go from the comfort zone to then the fear zone. Guess what? Right? That right there stops a lot of people, especially a lot of guys where they have these big old egos. Oh, I know what to do. I don't need any help. Like, guess what? Those are typically like, you know, I'll say it like this. Those are always the guys that you see at the bars on Saturday nights when there's UFC fights and boxing fights. And these are the fat guys that's drinking the beer, eating the nachos and the chicken wings. And they have the audacity to yell at the TV and saying, oh, you should have thrown a kick. You, you, you should have took him down. You should have threw that right hand, not a hook. They're coaching the actual athlete. Can, and you know, you know who I'm talking about. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. So keep that in mind, right? Because I don't want you being those people, right? So the fear zone, this is typically what stops people. And once again, I don't want you to be the guy that's, you know, saying, right, it's like the same person that's, you know, constantly, you know, telling everybody, oh, back in the high school glory days when I was the quarterback, it's like, dude, get that, get that crap out of you, right? Like, let's start living our life in the present and make our future better, right? But it's the, it's the stories and the things that we tell ourselves, that's what's going to help us. So we're not living this comfort zone life of the past, if that makes sense. Back to the fear zone. This is where you have that, the lack of self-confidence. And this is why, once again, like at Heartletics, we focus so much on not just the physical, but the mindset habits as well, because that gives people confidence, right? I'll say it like this. If you lost 20 pounds, had six-pack abs, right? You know what they say. When you look good, you feel good, you do good. Confidence right there, right? You just focus on your physical. Well, let's say your mindset. If you're focused on, let's say, maybe, I don't know, more gratitude in your life, maybe a better, you know, time focus on self-reflection, um, maybe gaining more knowledge, right? Think about it, right? If let's say there's a particular subject that you don't know anything about, but hey, you say, hey, I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes a day to learning more about this topic, you're probably going to have more confidence talking about that topic, you know, and because you, you spent that time working on that craft, you put in the reps. This stuff, guys, is not hard. It's just typically us as men, we make it so much harder for ourselves. That's the reality, right? The answers are very simple. It's just that we ultimately make it a lot harder for ourselves, you know? And then also in this fear zone, this is where you're finding excuses. You're also, and this is a big one that I'm going to kind of share with you guys a personal story with me when we get to the exercises, is you're affected by others' opinions. And I'll tell you what, that's a hard pill to swallow. I don't know many guys that can say, honestly, right? Where they're like, yeah, you're right. I'm scared of what other people think about me, right? I'm scared to do this. And I'll be honest, for a very long time, I was very, very nervous to share something personal about myself that once again, I'll talk about when we go to the exercises here in a little bit. But it's one of these things where you have to, you have to be real with yourself. You can't just fake it till you make it. You've got to find out like, what is that fear? What is stopping you? Because then from there, when you can really dig down deep and embrace that, then we can get to the learning zone, which is, you know, how to deal with challenges and problems. Because now you're looking at things from a more practical sense, 
a more mathematical sense, a more, you know, uh, uh, strategic sense rather than an emotional sense. Cause I know a lot of guys, they lack control of their emotions. It's a weak trait to have, right? When you lack self-control and just emotionally, you're a roller coaster. It's not good at all. Not good at all. And it's one of the things that in my opinion, most men should probably start working on more. And how do you get better at self-control with your own emotions? You got to dig a little deep and you have to embrace your emotions. You have to find out what is your insecurities and you have to embrace that. And once again, when we go to the exercises here in a little bit, you're going to learn exactly how to do that. Acquiring new skills, right? That's in the learning uh, zone. And remember at times, especially if, if it's anything, right? Uh, learning a new skill. So if let's say you don't know how to, you know, you're not a mechanic, you don't know how to work on your car in the very beginning stages, it's going to be difficult. It's a new skill to learn. It's going to be hard. But once again, just like anything in life, the more reps you do, the easier it gets. And then let's go lastly to the growth zone. You know, this is where you're finding your purpose. This is where you're living in your dreams. This is where you're setting new goals, right? And you're conquering, right? All these different, you know, objectives in life. And the growth zone is honestly where I want you to be because that version of you, that version of you is a, a beast. That version of you is the, the best, right? But it's not because of, you know, who you are maybe physically. It's because of who you are internally, mentally, emotionally, right? The growth version of you, that is also the version that is helping out others. And that is why it's very important to make sure that each and every day you're stepping outside your comfort zone. You're expanding and embracing that. And um, once again, when we start diving into some of these exercises here, hopefully you understand it doesn't have to be hard, but it's going to require some action. Just like anything in life, you know, it's going to require you to put in the work. Somebody could create the, you know, the best meal plan in the world for you, the best workout program in the world for you and say, hey, if you follow this, right, all you do is cross the T's, dot the I's, right? If you follow this plan, you're going to reach your goals and get in shape and have six pack abs and live your best life. But guess what? You have to pick up the pen and still cross the T and dot the I. You still have to put in the work. Keep that in mind as we progress. Now, before we start diving into some of those exercises on how to really, you know, expand your comfort zone, we need to talk about the good wolf versus the bad wolf. I've talked about this so many times and I will always talk about this because this holds so much truth. It really does. And yeah, it's this, you know, old Cherokee, you know, story where uh, the chief, you know, grandfather's teaching his grandson about, you know, this vicious battle between these two wolves. But keep it in mind, it's really about good versus evil. It's really about that internal uh, battles that we all face. We all face. The bad wolf wants nothing good for you. That's the evil one. That's the one that's feeding you the lies. Uh, for example, if let's say you're on your health and fitness journey, the bad wolf is the one that's saying, you know, hey, uh, you don't need to eat healthy. You're not seeing any weight loss. Just, just go back to eating, you know, McDonald's and, you know, smashing on the Big Macs. Your bad wolf is the one that's telling you, Hey, it's, you know, you don't need to get up and work out today. Just sleep in, skip the gym. It's only one bad day. It's not going to kill you. Your bad wolf is the one that is constantly telling you and reminding yourself that maybe every time you step on the scale, you're not good enough. You're never going to see the results. Every time you look in the mirror, nope, I'm not seeing any progress. Guess what? That's the bad wolf. And that's why at Heartletics, like we always inform and educate our members like, hey, like we'll just use progress photos, for example, you know, cause that's a great variable. You, right. Realistically probably can't see, uh, too many changes happen because you're always looking at yourself each and every day in the mirror. Think about it. We all see ourselves each and every day in the mirror. So if we're going to lose five pounds, we're pretty much not going to see too much. If we're going to lose 10 pounds, we're pretty much not going to see too much of a change, right? Even who knows, maybe it could be even 20 pounds. But because let's say we're constantly seeing ourselves each and every day, we're not seeing those small changes that's occurring on us. Why? Right? Because we're constantly seeing ourselves. But at Heartletics, we always like to, you know, upload our progress photos because that's a great form of, let's just say how somebody's actually progressing because that's what matters most. 
not the number on the scale, not even the, somebody's body fat percentage. It's how do they look? How do they feel? Honestly. So when we can share with somebody, hey, look at where you were when you first got started to where you're at now, because obviously they're not seeing themselves each and every day. They can see that comparison, the before and after. It's like the jaw drops, right? They're mind blown. They're like, holy cow, I look like a whole new person. It's like, yeah. And it's just like, don't stop. You're progressing. You're doing all the right things. Don't feed into the lies of the bad wolf that's telling you that you're not progressing. It is a vicious battle. And that's why we always say like at Heartletics, you really need to have support. You really need to have the right people inside of your corner that's holding you accountable and just that sense of community that's helping you. You know, nobody wants to go to war all by themselves. It's like, no, you're never going to feel confident that way. You're, you're never going to win that battle. You want to have your comrades. You want to have your brothers in arms next to you that's fighting for your safety, that's fighting for you as well. That's where you're going to feel confident. And the good wolf, right, the ones that we need to be feeding, these are the ones where at times, especially if you have so much just mental bandwidth of negativity, it's hard in the beginning to start feeding the good wolf. This is why when typically guys apply for our coaching program at Heartletics, if somebody's been struggling for, let's say, 10, 15, 20 years, they've tried all these different diets, and they're like, okay, I know I need a coach. I know I need a team. You know, Coach Joe and Heartletics, they have literally thousands of transformations. Hundreds of these guys get off the medications. They have a proven solution that works, but yet when it comes time to actually invest into their health, they still say no. They're still wondering and questioning themselves. They're doubting themselves. Oh, is this going to work for me? Oh, like, am I just going to waste away my money? Right? Think about it. It's because they have all these 10 plus years of constantly feeding the bad wolf. They don't have any good habits in their, in their mental bandwidth, right? The positivity of feeding the good wolf. So they, they, they have very low willpower, right? They're, they're just like emotionally, mentally drained because their whole entire life, they've been pretty much a slave to the negativity, a slave to the lies, a slave to uh, just feeding the bad wolf. Where whatever they do, they don't know even how to take the next step because they're so scared. They're so timid. Because once again, look at it, look at the trends. Who have they been feeding? They've been feeding the lies. So when it comes time to actually see, man, maybe Heartletics can help me have success at reaching my goals. They're going to constantly be just, feed, like, think about it. They're going to be constantly thinking in their head, like, for any little thing on how could this not work? Because they're so used to that from feeding the bad wolf. And it stops them from taking action, unfortunately. It's a real thing. That's why you got to surround yourself with the right people. And it's hard, very hard, if you haven't been doing that for quite some time. You need to start today. Hopefully, you can see that my tonality from today's video is a little bit different than how I normally talk in these episodes. Because this is so serious. So serious. And I want you to leave a legacy I want you to live your best life. I want you to become the best version of yourself mentally and physically. And I know you can't do that by yourself. Just like you can't win a, a war by yourself. Just like you can't win a basketball game all by yourself, one against five. If you're on the island all by yourself, you only know what you know. You have to learn how to push the ego, the bad wolf to the side, wave the white flag and say, get me off the island. Get me to civilization. Because when you start surrounding yourself that with people that are used to feeding the good wolf, guess what? That positivity is going to start bleeding off to you. Les Brown said it best. Birds of a feather flock together. In life, if you surround yourself with losers, you're going to become a loser. But on the flip side, if you surround yourself with winners, you're going to become a winner. You know who wants you to become a winner? The good wolf. You know how you can become a winner? Start feeding it. Honestly. The good wolf is the one that wants nothing but love, joy, peace. I like to say it's like the fruits of the spirit, self-control, like all this stuff, right? Like it is the one that is going to be your biggest cheerleader. It is the one that's going to be your biggest support system. But if you have no faith in that good wolf because you haven't been feeding it, it's weak. It's not strong. You've been too busy working out and training and, you know, giving all these steroids pretty much to the bad wolf to where... It's always, you know, defeating the good wolf. You need to learn how to take action. You need to learn how to take ownership. 
And remember, as we get into these exercises here, you're going to learn exactly how to do that. And I only hope and pray that you start doing that today because it's not so much about you hurting yourself by not stepping outside your comfort zone. It's more so the fact of what are the lives that you're not impacting because you're too afraid to step outside your comfort zone? Let me repeat that one more time. I want to make sure that makes complete sense. All right? I don't want that to go over your head. It's not so much of you, right, hurting yourself by not stepping outside the comfort zone and you not going after your goals. No, it's nothing to do with you at all. It's more so of who are the lives, that, the opportunities that you're missing out on because you're too afraid to start feeding the good wolf, to start stepping outside the comfort zone. I mean, think about that. Remember, I told you, I don't want to make it to heaven one day and God telling me, dude, I had all these amazing things planned for you. But I was too afraid because I was stuck inside my comfort zone. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm good right here. I got this success in my business. I got this success in my, you know, my family. I'm good. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's like, no, we cannot live our lives like that. We need to learn how to, once again, leave a legacy. Go after more than what's even you know on the table because it's like, hey, what are the lives that we have an opportunity here to impact and change? And I think that's one of the greatest things about life that everybody has permission to start doing. And hopefully in today's episode, you start taking permission of your own life and start doing exactly the same. Now let's dive into some of the exercises that you can do to really help you step outside your comfort zone. Okay, This is a personal one coming from me. Uh, you can go to Google, you can go to YouTube, find some other tips and tricks on how to you know, embrace your comfort zone and step outside and different, you know, action steps to take. They might work. They might not. I, it doesn't matter. This is a personal one coming from me. I've been doing this for years and it's always done with this three-step formula. Three steps. That's it. With that being said, it's hard. Keep that in mind. But like anything in life, right? If it's hard, it's typically worth doing in the end. You can look back and say, I'm really glad I decided to do that and not quit and not give up. So just keep that in mind going into this. The first step, right, the first exercise is to go within and find the root of the issue, okay? I'm going to just use myself as a personal story with this one, okay? And this is very recent, very recent, all right? Um, I had the hardest time Okay, expressing my faith, my religion, right? Expressing my faith on social media, the hardest time. And and think about this. As you know this, going into this, hopefully you can find your root of the issue. Hopefully you can find what is the, the, the comfort zone that you're trying to embrace and get out of by just hearing me talk about this. And hopefully you can start just picking up some of the missing pieces, putting it right into your life where you can say, okay, I just need to do this and, and let's just go for it because I promise you it will change your life and you're going to feel so proud of yourself. I want to say that before we actually start diving into this, what I did, I've never in my life, okay, felt as proud of myself as I did when I decided to do what I'm about to share with you guys, okay? It was like the biggest ripping off the band-aid feeling, but looking back at it, I was so proud of myself. And that's hard for a lot of guys to admit being proud of themselves. You know, this is one aspect where I was like, man, Joe, you, bro, you did it, man. I'm proud of you. So for context, okay. Once again, I had the hardest time just sharing my faith on social media. I always was scared and I had to realize this, like, this is something that's a, a personal thing with me. And why am I afraid? I, I mean, I can go, you know, fight in front of all these people in a cage, right? Back when I did MMA and box and, you know, speak on stage and talk to people. And I never got scared, right? I never got timid. Like sure in the beginning, right? You got to learn new tricks. And, you know, obviously with fighting, you have to learn all these different techniques. But I never felt as nervous as it was as expressing my faith on social media, so I had to pull out my three-step formula for, hey, how do I embrace and get out of my comfort zone? And so I had to first go within and find the root of the issue. And remember I talked about before the comfort zone 
And then you have that fear zone of, you know, really wondering and questioning other people's opinions on me. And that was the root of the issue. So it's like, think about it. The big, the, the overall picture, right, is, hey, I had a very hard time expressing my faith on social media. Why? Other people can do it, but why me? And I had to dig down deep. And this is why, you know, hey, a lot of time in prayer, a lot of time in meditation, right? Collecting my internal thoughts, right? Just once again, working on my own mindset, working on my own mental and emotional health. I was able to find the root of the issue, which was I was very nervous on what other people would think of me. Because for the longest, it was, hey, Coach Joe's the fitness guy, right? Nutrition, eating the donuts, got the six pack, right? Living his best life, helping out all these people. That was me, right? Still am, but there was a side that I wasn't showing because I was scared. Well, hey, what if some other people over here have different beliefs than I do? I don't want to offend anybody by sharing my faith. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And so I remember, you know, after I got done praying and meditating about that, trying to read the Bible and I couldn't even do it, but I get it. I got all these thoughts in my head going through me. What am I going to say? How am I going to do it? What should I do? Immediately pulled up my notes, started writing for, for probably 45 minutes. I got everything in terms of what I want to say, how I'm going to say it, the message to get across what's in my head and writing down everything, go to the gym, come home and boom, right? Here we are. The third step, the action. Taking the leap of faith and seeing what happens. And so I decide to, you know, just go on there, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, post it on my YouTube channel. Hey, new episode, words of wisdom, wrestling with God. Guys, today we're going to talk all about my walk with faith, right? What happened the past 30 years, where I am at today. And here's a little story for you guys that can maybe inspire you. It's maybe like a 35, 40 minute video I made. And uh, kid you not, I was very, very nervous recording that, like shaking like a leaf, very, very scared. And I remember when it ended pressing stop and just saying a quick prayer. Like, I really hope I didn't offend anybody. But no, I got a lot of messages, a lot. People bombarding me with, dude, Keep that up. That was awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that. Like, dude, I you you broke everything down from a different perspective. Like, you know, one individual said, you know, you talked about, you know, your faith and religion and you, you, you talked about in a way where it's just like health and fitness and it makes sense. And just what you say just kind of clicked with me. Like, thank you. And I kid you not, once again, that is the first time in my life I felt so proud of myself. Proud of myself. And... I followed this three-step formula, the same three exercises I'm sharing with you right now. One, go within, find the root of the issue. The root of the issue with me, I was worried about, hey, what are people going to think of me? What if I did this? You know, what are they going to, what are they going to say? What are they, what's going to happen? But I also had to flip the coin and say, but what are the lives that I'm, I'm not helping by me being too scared because I'm not confident in my own faith. Like, come on, you know, that's me being a hypocrite. It's like, I can't be one person behind the doors and not the same person in public. It's like, no. So I had to go within and find that out. Second, I had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Remember, like this was something that was very challenging, but anytime I'm faced with a fear and especially when I'm getting thoughts in my head, like, okay, say this, do this, like, I know for a fact, like, okay, hey, calm down and let's just start getting to work, plain and simple. And one thing to help you out, right, with get comfortable with being uncomfortable is start doing small tasks outside your comfort zone to help. And I'm going to share with you some more specifics here in a little bit. But then the last, right, exercise is taking that leap of faith and seeing what happens because you have to do something. You can't be that type of person that's constantly, you know, hey, saying you're going to do this, right? You can't just talk the talk. You actually have to walk the walk and have that leap of faith and see what happens. And once again, typically it's not going to be this, this big fear that you have. It's really not. Now, 
what are some tips? Because I'm not saying you need to go out there and preach your faith. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. And I'm not saying you need to go, you know, jump off a, helicop- a helicopter to, you know, and go skydiving to embrace your comfort zone. No. Find something, right? Just like at Heartletics, everything we talked about, everything, physical habits, the mindset habits, it's not a one size fits all cookie cutter or anything. Find something that works for you. Typically, if you go to the weight room, right, you go to the gym, you can honestly step outside your comfort zone by going for a PR, right? Let's say if you never bench pressed 200 before, you've been stuck at, let's say, you know, 185. Hey, go tap somebody's shoulder that you don't know. Say, bro, can you come spot me? I'm going to attempt this. I don't want to kill myself. And just go for it. Whether you fail or not, who cares? You showed up to the plate. You took the swing. That's all that matters. You will learn so much about yourself, right? Honestly, when you start stepping outside your comfort zone, that's one aspect. What's another one? Well, you can do something small. Maybe pay for somebody's Starbucks, you know, if that's where you decide to get coffee or right? Starbucks behind you and you're in the drive-thru. Pay for the person behind you. Pay for, pay for theirs as well. Maybe you can call up a loved one, whether that's a family member or, you know, a uh, friend. You haven't talked to them in years. Give them a call. Check in with them. Maybe you can write somebody a personal note, right? Maybe they like, you know, positively affected your life somehow and influenced you and really helped you out. And hey, you just want to thank them and you want to write them a note. These are small little things that anybody can do. Anybody can do. It, it, it could be also as so small as like, you know, talking to some friends about some of your insecurities. That's a big step outside your comfort zone, right? But remember, you're not even actually doing anything. You're just having a conversation, So stepping outside your comfort zone, just keep this in mind. It's all personal to you because everybody has different goals and different dreams. But regardless of what that is, go with using this three-step formula, right? These exercises right here. First, go within and find the root of the issue. Second, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And lastly, take that leap of faith and see what happens. You got this, right? Rip off the Band-Aid. Decide to leave a legacy, Don't live your life with all these regrets because when you get to your deathbed, that's not going to be fun. You're going to be looking back and saying, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish I would have said this or I wish I would have took this opportunity. That's a life. Remember, you got one life to live. I have one life to live. That's a life where it's not going to be fun at all, where it's nothing but regrets at the end of the day. Here's just a quick recap. First, we talked all about the comfort zone. And remember, your favorite athletes, role models, actors, celebrities, whoever, everybody Everybody at one point in their life had to learn how to take that leap of faith outside their comfort zone. We then dove into the good wolf versus the bad wolf. Remember, push the ego to the side, right? You're only hurting yourself by constantly feeding that bad wolf. And lastly, just a three-step formula that you can use with some simple exercises to really help you when it comes to expanding and stepping outside your comfort zone. So hopefully you guys got a lot of value from today's presentation and just keep this in mind, okay? Your comfort zone, it's a real thing. It does exist, but hear me out. Your dreams are right on the other side of that. And I know it's hard to take that leap of faith. I know it's hard to take that first step, but if you just listen to uh, some of the different, you know, uh, things I talked about in today's presentation, uh, especially about just feeding the good wolf rather than feeding the bad wolf, building up some of those better habits for yourself, trying out some of those exercises, and most importantly, surround yourself with the right people that is going to hold you accountable, uh, be there to help you, and most importantly, comfort and support you on this journey, then sure enough, you're going to embrace that comfort zone and you will get one step closer to your goals. With that being said, this has been Coach Joe with the Heartletics Podcast, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out, Girl Scouts.